Thank you for joining us. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing what a vow is, what a vow adjustment is. I know that I've spoken a lot about this and I've put some media out there about vows, so let's get started. First, we're gonna discuss what four strokes or what happens when a piston goes up and down on an engine. So let's draw out the piston here. So for example, this is our piston, okay? And the piston, it completes four strokes, which means it starts at the top position and it goes down. When it goes down, this is the intake. So it's intaking air. The next stroke is going, going to come back up. It's called the compression stroke. And the next stroke is coming back down, which is the power stroke. And the last stroke is the exhaust stroke. So there you have it. We have four strokes, the intake, compression stroke, power stroke, and exhaust stroke. This is the piston here. Now, it takes four strokes to complete one cycle, okay? So that's, this is why it's called a four-stroke engine. The only two strokes that are gonna be out there are the heavy, heavy ship motors. Those are the ones that are gonna be more, uh, but mo all semi-trucks are gonna be four strokes. So when we look at this, how does this happen? How does the intake open? How does it compress? How does it, how's the power happen? And how does the exhaust happen? Now this happens with the, I'm gonna move this over here. This happens with the cylinder head. Now, if we're looking at the cylinder head, each cylinder head is going to have four valves. You're going to have an exhaust valve, two exhaust valves, and two intake valves. Okay, so these are the valves that we're speaking about when it comes to adjusting the valves, worn valves, burnt valves. This is, this is the valves that we're talking about. Now, this is, just, this is looking at the bottom of the head. Now, if we want to get more in depth on how these valves are assembled, now you have a valve stem and then at the bottom of it is a circular pattern so this is what's cut into the cylinder head here you have the cylinder head let me bring this down a little bit here you have the cylinder head and the valve is in its position now in a closed position which is normally closed. These valves are normally closed. These valves are normally closed. They're gonna sit all the way against the head like this. So they're gonna create, and there's gonna be a machine surface on the head that has the valve sit in there like this. So you can have a complete seal on what's going on here in the combustion chamber. So when it's closed, it's sealed. So the way that it's closed is there's a spring with a retainer that's creating force upward. So normally it's closed. Normally it's a closed position. So, so we have our cylinder head. We have our valve that's gonna be seated all the way up against the head. And we have a spring with a retainer creating force upward. So when you look at a head and you have it off, you'll see that this is what the head looks like with the retainer spring. Now, over time, valves can wear in these grooves and create a leak, or there's also a seal in this area of the seal of the of the valve stem, and up top which we'll, I'll explain here in a minute, is, could be, is gonna be full of oil and this could leak, leak through the seal. The oil can leak through the seal into the combustion chamber, which is another problem that we see, which is, that would be a seal leak. So let's, let's keep moving on. Now, we're talking about valves and their operation and the importance of adjustments as well. So how is this all, working how is the valves opening and closing why when the engine's operating now th this is mechanically all this is mechanical mechanically operated which means it's not it's not operated by any electric electronics or solenoid electrical solenoids so 
the way that it's all meshed together is you have this is an image of the gear train so this is the crank the main crank and then up here you would have a cam this could be a bull gear this is an idler now this is all examples M most engines are going to have some additional gears like an uh, accessory drive gear anything like that but th this is just for explanation purposes so when the engine rotates it rotates this way all these gears are going to rotate and this is what rotates the cam now anytime you disassemble an engine that's why it's very important to line up all these you're going to have marks timing marks to ensure that the ca the crank is in time with the cam and i'm going to explain why that's important here in a minute so you have the cam most of the time the cams are going to be overhead single overhead or dual overhead cams it just depends on what mo what model some engines uh, as for example the x15 went to a single overhead cam as a dd15 has dual overhead cams which just means it's going to have two cams when that happens usually the gear configuration is going to be a little bit different you can have for example if we don't have the cam directly mesh with the um, bull gear then you would have another idler and then you have your two two cam gears so you have an idler and then two cam gears that's how a dual overhead cam would stay in sync with the crank now let's explain why this is important so when we go to the valves and we talk about how these valves this is a valve assembly now they're going to be like that they're going to be flat at the bottom like this so that they can seal up against the head now the way that this valve is open and closed as i mentioned earlier there's a retainer spring that's holding it closed and giving it an upward force and sealing it up against the head this is what a normally a normal valve looks like so the way that it is it is pushed or opened is you're going to have a rocker arm assembly like so with a roller now this rocker and roller of course is going to be anchored down and the way that it's just going to push be pushing down and the way that this is just pushing down when this pushes down it's going to of course open up the valve and that's how the valve opens now the way that this is open and closed is there's different configurations out there but most of the time you have a rocker arm and the, the cam, the cam that we talked about earlier, is designed with oval shapes on it. So you'll have an oval shape on the cam like this, and this would be the center part. So whenever this cam rotates this way, it's gonna make a rocking motion and push the rocker down, up and down like a seesaw, pushing the, pushing the valve down and open it, and that's how it works. Now, a lot of these valves are going to have adjustment screws on top so this is where the adjustments are made now when we make the adjustments we're checking the the play here from the rocker adjustment bolt to the valve stem up at the top so though this is what this is what an adjustment is this is why we adjust this is what's going on Whenever adjustments happen, we're filling the filler gauge in this area to ensure that the gap is not too, too wide so that the timing, when it comes back to the timing, we come back to all our gears timed, everything's rotating. You want to ensure everything is precise. Now, over time, items are going to wear. You're going to have these, the springs here can get a, bit, a little bit looser the the valves where they seat up against the head can can cause a little bit of wear also over 500,000 miles and most OEMs are going to ask you to do the initial adjustment at 500,000 we would suggest to keep a a regular adjustment at every 200,000 miles now the way the reason why this is so important is because you, we don't have a automated automated valve train system that that adjusts during RPMs, like the gasoline engines are coming up with a lot of ver veritable veritable timing when it comes to cams, so that it can open and close the valves. Now diesel engines don't have that, semi trucks don't have that, so that's why it's important that 
over time, even whenever you're at 500,000 miles, you want to check the play in this gears. You want to check your timing in some, in most valve val adjustment procedures, you're going to have to check timing first. And that's whenever all engines are going to be different, but most of the time you're going to put the, the, the crank or the piston in top dead center, number one, and then you're going to go ahead and check your marks to ensure you're on time. So that's what a valve is and that's what a valve adjustment does So in a diesel engine. So I hope this information was useful. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like and subscribe and thank you for watching.